We're taking a live look this morning at Fort Lauderdale, Florida, one of the many coastal towns where people are bracing for the wrath of Hurricane Dorian. Utility crews from 34 states have arrived in Florida to help with power outages that are sure to come. Up in South Carolina, people are flocking to grocery stores and gas stations after the governor issued a mandatory evacuation for coastal counties starting at noon today. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm just getting started with your nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. We have new information this morning on a Minnesota grandmother accused of killing her husband in their home and a woman she met in Florida. Information from search warrants executed in the two months after the April 2018 shooting death of David Reese in Blooming Prairie, Minnesota, says deputies found the victim dead and covered with a blanket after his business partner asked them to check on him. He hadn't seen Reese in 16 days and says Lois Reese texted them that David was on a fishing trip, was sick and that they should not bother him at the house. Search warrants say Reese was killed by multiple shots from a 22 caliber gun. Police say testing confirms the gun found in Lois's hotel room was the one used to kill David. The documents don't reveal any other possible motive beyond the more than $10,000 in business checks belonging to her husband that Lois is charged with illegally cashing. She's also accused of killing Pamela Hutchinson in Florida 13 days later, allegedly to steal her identity. Lois was the subject of a nationwide manhunt and was caught by U.S. Marshals in South Padre Island, Texas, a few weeks after the murders. It's nine minutes before seven. Let's get a check of our Labor Day forecast with Lisa Green. Good morning. We want to check in on Dorian right now. Currently still a Category 5 storm. We're going to put this into motion and show you there hasn't been a lot of movement over the last six hours with this storm. It's still quite powerful with the maximum sustained winds of 165 miles per hour moving to the west at only one mile per hour. So it's really stalled out over Grand Bahama Island, unfortunately, for uh, that area. You can see the outer bands uh, really are impacting the eastern part of the Florida coast there. And, and gradually, it'll make that right turn, and we'll see that start to move northward. But the question is, is when that will happen, and we'll continue to monitor that. So that's what's happening, of course, in the Atlantic. That's the big story today. But we have our own issues out there. This morning, we're starting off with some fog. It's looking a little bit better on our sky cam here in South Fargo, but you can still see that shallow layer impacting your visibility if you're hitting the road this morning. And a look at our visibility reports. We're at a quarter mile in Bemidji. That's the lowest report we're seeing right now, but Fargo up at the airport, we've got eight miles, and we know that it's lower than that in the southern end of the metro. So keep in mind, this is variable throughout the valley that we're seeing this fog. And our temperatures are ranging from some 40s, 44 degrees in Grand Forks, to 50s in Fargo, 54 for even some low 60s, 61 in Fergus Falls and Gwinter. So a range of temperatures. The other issue today is the chance for severe weather coming up for the second half of the day. Right now things are pretty quiet. We just have some clouds streaming through. As we look off to the northwest, you could see some storms in northwestern North Dakota that are going to start trying to approach the valley. So we'll see that first and into the early afternoon and then potentially later afternoon, some stronger storms move in. So this is noon today on our hour by hour planner. Now our latest forecast model shows a couple of rounds, perhaps some uh, scattered areas of thunderstorms that produce some hail, maybe an isolated tornado this afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s to some 70s. Of course, that will hinge upon where we get the cloud cover and who gets hit by the rain because that will cool us down. And then heading into this evening, another round of it potentially into the late night hours tonight. Now we're looking at an enhanced risk for the valley, especially in Fargo and right along I-94 down toward Minneapolis, Grand Forks, and then down toward the state line in South Dakota as well. This is where the threat is greatest, but all parts of the valley are included in this threat for today and into tonight. Tomorrow back to school, back into the 60s, windy and sprinkly too. So kind of a gray, gloomy weather to head back to school in Minnesota. And now look for, or now a look at traffic. Here's Devin Fry with the Valley Today's Traffic Update.
Speaking of gray, gloomy weather in Minnesota, I'm now in Moorhead. Good timing, Lisa, we didn't even plan that. Um, we're heading down 8th Street, and as you can see, fog is still pretty present in this area. I would say a couple miles up there is where the visibility stops. We're heading along the Concordia campus now. But um, overall, the fog has lifted quite a bit since this morning. Earlier today, we were going down 19th Avenue in North Fargo, and you couldn't even see half a mile in front of you. So things have definitely lightened up quite a bit since this morning. Good news. Also, traffic flow has stayed about the same since we started earlier in this hour. There hasn't been much uh, uh, congestion on the roadways at all. I blame the holiday. <laughs> Since it's Labor Day, there's not a whole lot of uh, traffic on the main roads. The busiest roadways are going to be the interstates. So if you're leaving uh, for your morning commute this morning, you should be right on time. Thank you for joining me in this hour for your traffic on the move. We're going to go ahead and check out the interstates on the Fargo CW on the next hour. For your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. It's now five minutes before seven with construction happening right in front of the Moorhead High School. Some may be concerned as their students head back to class for their first day back tomorrow. Getting a look at where the project stands is the Valley Today's Abby Furchner as she joins us from that area live this morning. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lisa. I'm here on 21st Street South where it is connected to 2nd Avenue right outside of Moorhead High School. And as we can see, this area is pretty open. It comes right off of Highway 10 and it is very easy for students to navigate and access the parking lot in the high school through this way. But that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be some construction projects going on as school has gets started tomorrow. So you're still gonna wanna take your time, especially coming off of Main Avenue. We were just over there a bit earlier and it's just a small roundabout for that detour coming off of Oak Way to get to the parking lot for students. So you're gonna wanna give yourself a lot of extra time if you're coming from Main Avenue because that's where we're gonna see the most traffic tomorrow as students head back to school. There's gonna be buses, kids walking, driving, and then of course people living in that neighborhood are also going to be trying to get to where they need to be tomorrow morning as police. I talked with Moorhead police and they told me that there are going to be some extra patrol officers in this area. So that's not necessarily to give out tickets, but that's just to make sure that everybody is following these detours. Students are getting to where they need to be safely and of course drivers as well. So you're going to want to give yourself some give yourself some extra time tomorrow and just make sure that you know where you're going and you're following those detours. Great advice. Abby Perchner reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. A Lisbon, North Dakota teenager is dead after a dirt bike crash in western North Dakota. The Highway Patrol says the 19-year-old was on an off-road trail when she lost control of the bike and was thrown. It happened near the city of Trotters in McKenzie County yesterday afternoon. Troopers expect to release the victim's name later today. Another teenager is being treated for serious injuries after being thrown from an ATV. The Outer Tell County Sheriff's Department says two girls were riding on a field road just south of Parker's Prairie on Saturday afternoon when the 15-year-old driver lost control in a muddy area. Both she and her passenger were thrown from the four-wheeler. Deputies say when they arrived, the driver was not responsive and appeared to have suffered a head injury and broken bones. The passenger was not hurt. Police are going to make sure people who use their cell phones while driving get a tough lesson this month. Fargo is one of many cities across the country that are assigning extra police patrols in September to find distracted drivers. Remember the rules. Drivers should not be using a wireless device to create, read, or send a message when behind the wheel. Police say if you need to text, pull over and do it. You can also have your passenger text for you. They know cell phone use is a habit for many people, so they suggest putting your phone out of reach, maybe even in the trunk while driving. And don't forget, in the state of Minnesota, drivers are not allowed to drive with a cell phone in their hands, although you can still use your phone through voice commands and single touch activation. A Fargo man is the first in the state to take advantage of North Dakota's new second chance law. Adam Martin's four felonies are now sealed from his public record. State lawmakers this year passed a bill that took hold August 1st. It's designed to give nonviolent and non-sexual offenders a second chance in society 
by improving chances of getting a job and a place to live. The reason that it was so paramount to me was that it was like a new day for people who have been struggling with felony backgrounds. The law requires offenders to stay out of trouble for a certain number of years. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. 85% of us love the smell of this, but the rest of us think it stinks. The answer, the ocean. Makes sense. Most of us would agree that's a, a good smell, but a scary smell right now if you're on the East Coast. Yeah, you know, Category 5 storms still churning, basically not moving at all. So they're really dealing with a scary situation there. Here in the Valley, we're starting off with some fog. Severe storms later today. Stay weather aware.